Yeah. Go read a book, you illiterate son of a bitch. And step up your vocab. Hi, everyone. This is Lulu. And you are listening to the Classic Press Podcast. This is episode number three. So today I am discussing the selected writings and speeches of Marcus Garvey. And this is Dover Thrift Edition from the Dover Thrift Edition. So here's some backstory about Mr. Garvey. Mr. Garvey is of Jamaican descent and he was inspired and moved by Booker T. Washington and he moved to the United States. This is around the late 1800s, early 1900s and he basically became a political activist And by becoming a political activist, he created this organization called the Universal Negro Improvement, believing that in a separate black state, African Americans will be able to live out in live out in themselves and just be, as he stated. And if I had a title for, if I had to summarize or give a title for this podcast, it would really be like the progress of equality because what he discussed is still something that is brought up such as economic inequality, political oppression, social injustices. And here we are in 2017, we are still entertaining these same ideas. Again, what I found Interesting, to give you some context, you have this this birthing of ideas. In this case, Marcus Garvey, he's known for Pan-Africanism or the concept of Garveyism, you know, coin the phrase, Africa is for Africans. And this is the first time you get to hear people such as a Booker T. Washington, a Marcus Garvey, a W.E.B. Du Bois, fleshing out new thought, new idea, just practicing their own agency without the the need for a, a white liberator such as a William Lloyd Garrison. It was their voices, it was their ideas. And it it was the first time that that this is happening, this bubble of individuals now that they're free and well, that's subjective, but they're free. They're able to think for themselves and exist in their time and formulate their own idea of themselves. What I was able to digest from the book were the, again, the idea, if you can't tell, collectivism. And he believed, Garvey believed that if we, if African Americans practice collectivism, it would basically reduce out all threats. And by doing that, it was basically he formulated, hey, you need your own black state, you need your own black country, you need to have your own 
if you don't, you're just always in constant threat. Another thing he brought about was white liberalism. And hey, the United States of America is a predominantly white country. African Americans are a minority. So for everything they do, they have to interact with whiteness, be it from work, banking, uh, what else, politics. So he brings in this concept of, hey, do we have to persuade like white liberals to help us in this concept? And it's just like, I understand it because the numbers are just not there. But at the same time, it's just like, no, it's whoever's threatening you need to question, you know, if, if there is a kind-hearted person who is brave enough, needs to question who, that, you know, needs to question that individual who's threatening you and, you know, clock it and say, hey, why is this occurring? But it's always the, the bubbling up of we need to get this person to help us, help African Americans in getting things done and gaining protection. Oh, let's see here. So, like I said, it's the turn of the century, late 1800s, early 1900s. Slavery is abolished. There's this motion or this collective idea of practicing your own self-agency. So now you have school of thoughts that came out of there. Again, you have Booker T. Washington, you have this gentleman, Marcus Garvey, and W.E.B. Du e. e. Du Bois. And in here, I didn't quite feel comfortable with this one, but he does the concept of what I would say the call out culture. <laughs> and he calls out met some members of the NAACP. It may have been justified. It may not have been. But it's just like, hey, all right. Whatever the issue is, there needs to be more, there, there, there's a need for more political organization. So you may not be, they may be tackling it in another means. However, as a collective, you should be able to work with them to push forward in getting to the overall objective or goal at that time. So I was just, uh, again, a little bit uneasy about the call out culture. Because it was just, all right, you have your own organization, which is the UNIA, and you have this opposing organization, which is the NAACP, and it's just like, oh, you guys are at your infancy, so it's not that great to do that. However, both of these organizations were relevant and needed you need that yin and yang to make a contrast and it's not a bad thing. They can it, they can coexist, family. They just can coexist and no one needs to feel threatened or put anyone down. And lastly, what, like my book, this book, there are so many post-its, and I don't know if I should read a line in here. I, I, okay, one, one of the things that I... I don't think I can pull it up. Can I pull it up? One of the things he brought up that kind of... 
was in kind of burned into my head was the concept of hey you know who's going to be our downfall it would be at the term the term at the time would be the ne the negro like something internal would would stifle the progress that he would like to achieve and you know the whole saying you are your own worst enemy but again i like seeing this again i was aware of who he was i wasn't aware of his general writing so it was great to get introduced or be introduced to marcus garvey and understand his objectives and what the UNIA was about and what he was trying to accomplish with with his activism again it's it's his theories and thoughts are still alive today so it's just a, a, a good read you know it's there's a lot of medicine in his speeches so give this man i will give this man a buku 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 credit so i i will give it a, a four out of five a four out of five i'm gonna do some more digging to see if there are anything out there because by the end of this, he was basically is, is it exile out of, out of the United States? Because yeah, he may have been a political activist, but he wasn't really great on the economics spectrum with uh, pulling money and managing money. So he was basically convicted of, I believe, money laundering or wire fraud of some of some something to that effect. And he was, uh, he had to be shipped back to Jamaica, Jamaica. So hopefully I can get some of his writings afterwards and see what he discussed and what I can ruminate and learn from. So, all right, family, again, this is the Classic Press, episode three, and Marcus Garvey. This one's pretty short, but yeah, it took me a long time to record, but all right, take care, have a good one.